In the last video, we looked at the login screen and how we can retrieve data from the text fields for username and password and compare the values in those text fields to existing data in our database tables uh, that we had stored earlier. In this video, we're going to look at how we can navigate between screens using buttons uh, and as well as um, adding assets to our, our screens in the form of images. Um, we're going to look at how we can respond to drop-down widgets and respond to buttons in order to do different things. And lastly, we're going to look at how we can create database records in a table. So brand new records in our table to store data that the user is inputting into the app. So let's begin by just logging in using the username and password that I'd set up before. You can see that by clicking on the login button, it takes me to my activity screen. Okay, And my activity screen is very simple. Uh, it just has three buttons that can take me to other screens. And you can see the code that I've written for my activity screen right here. Notice that for each button, I have an event handler. right? So What's highlighted now, this is the event handler for the new order button, which is this button. The event it's responding to is a click, and what it does in response to that click is to set the screen to my place order screen, which I've called place screen. Similarly, if I click the view orders button, I respond to that click by setting the screen to the view orders screen. Also, similarly, if I click log out, it takes me um, back to the login screen, and I've created this variable called user ID to keep track of who's logged in. Uh, I started that out at negative one. I've added this code since the last video. When they log in, it sets the user ID to the ID of the person that is logged in. So right now, I'm logged in as myself, and that ID is one. If I were to click log out, it will log me out and bring me back to the login screen. Okay, I'm gonna log back in. Comes here. Okay. What I want to do now is um, <clears throat> look at what happens when I click on the new order button. This will take me, as we can tell, to the place screen, okay, which is my place and order screen. Okay. Uh, you can see I've got drop downs for the product, the quantity, and then the price will be calculated from that. And then I can add that item to the cart if I want to. And once I've added everything to the cart, I can proceed to checkout. Uh, if I click on the drop down, though, I have these option one, option two. But those aren't my products. I want this to have information from my product list, my product database. So I need to connect that code, um, or I need to connect that data in the database to my code, to my user interface um, by writing code. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, I've got down here an area for my place new order screen. So again, keep your code organized. We want to um, you know, make sure things are readable. The first thing I want to do is make sure that this dropdown has the items in it that I want from my, my product database. Now, if I look at my data, <clears throat> I've got a products database, but I have nothing in it. So let's go ahead and add some products. Um, let's see, this could be a candy store. So uh, I'm going to sell Snickers, full size candy bar, unit price, a uh, dollar. I'm going to add that row. I'm also going to have uh, Skittles, full size bag, make that. 75 cents, add that row, uh, what else, sour patch, kids, yum, and we'll make that, I don't know, 50 cents. Okay, you might have a lot more entries in your tables than I have here, and of course I might have way more entries than three. Uh, but for now, that's good enough to start with, uh, and so we will um, just go from there. So, how do I get these items into my dropdown? Well, we need to pull this information from there into the uh, code here. I'm a little bit bothered by the quotes. I need to fix that. I 
think maybe I need a zero point there to make it happy. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. So let's go to the code and figure out how to populate this dropdown with this information. Since I want this to only happen once, I'm going to do this actually outside of any event, outside of the place order screen. I'm going to do this up at the beginning of the code. Okay. So what do I want to do? I want to read in the information from the product database table and put it in here. So the first thing I need to do is go back to that read records function that we used when we did the login. But I'm going to read from a different table. I'm going to read from the products table. So read records. What table? Uh, the products table. Okay. The terms. Uh, what terms do I... Am I looking for specific products? No, I want all of the products. So there are no terms, so I'm going to give it an empty list that I denote with empty square bra or empty uh, curly braces, excuse me, right? So there are no terms. I want this will give me all of the products in the table. And what do I want to do with that? Well, I want to write a function that's going to handle all those records that come back. When you have a read records um, call like this, again, you're specifying the table criteria for the items you want to get from that table, and then what should happen in response once those records are retrieved. So we're writing a function that uh, will act upon this list of records that's coming back from this call. Okay, so that's all in there. Well, what do I want to do? Uh, I want to get all of the items in this table into this dropdown. Okay. So the way that I do that is that I loop through, well, I'll actually show you. If we look at this dropdown, what we want to be able to do is set the property of the dropdown to contain all of the items. Okay, so if you look down here in the user interface, because that's what I'm dealing with, the user, user interface element. If I look at the property, For that to pop up, maybe, maybe not. It's inconvenient. There we go. There are lots of different properties depending upon what user interface element you're dealing with. Okay, so uh, you can kind of see what things work on. We want things that work on a drop down. Now, the one I want here is options. So I want to set the property of the dropdown, the options property of the dropdown to be my list of options. But notice it takes a list of values. So I have to create a list. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna create a list. I'll call this var product list. Okay, and I'm gonna set that equal to just an empty list. Okay. Then I want to populate this variable with all of the strings, all of the names of the products in my product table. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use a loop. Okay, we studied loop before. Um, we'll say for var i equals zero, and I want to loop through all of the records coming back. Okay, and so I'm going to loop while i is less than the length of the records. The way I get that is records.length. That's how many records there are. And each time through the loop, I'm going to add one. Okay, what am I going to do in this loop? Well, I'm going to add the name of the product to this list of products. Okay, now there's a special function that lets you do that. It's called append item. Okay, append item, whoops, append item takes a list and an item to add to that list. My, the name of my list is product list. The item that I want to add. Hmm, what's the item I want to add? Well, it's the product name, right? Product name from the database. Well, where am I getting that from? Well, that's from the records. The records contains all of the database entries that have come back from this read records call. I want the ith record. Well, so the first time through the loop, I want the first record, which is record sub zero. The second time through the loop, I want the second record, which is record sub one. The third time through the loop, I want the third record, which is record sub two. But generally, because I is starting at zero and going through the entire length of that records list, 
I want the ith record in the ith iteration of the loop. Okay. Now, what part of that record do I want? I want the name port. Okay. So I say records of i dot name. This will add the product name to the product list. Now, once I loop through the entire set of records, I will have a product list that contains all of the items in that database, and I can then make that list the option list for my dropdown. So, how am I going to do that? Oh, again, I'm going to use the set property method for my dropdown. Now, what's the name of my dropdown? Hmm, I don't remember. I better go back to design, look at my place order screen and see oh it's called product underscore db for drop down so product underscore db the op the uh, property I want to set is the options property and what I want to set it to is the product list that I just created okay this is how we populate a drop down. Let's check and see if it's working by running. I'm going to log in again. Place a new order. Hey, check it out, Snickers. And if I click the drop down, I've got the three possibilities. So look over this code if you want to learn how to uh, populate a drop down using database um, information and ask me questions about how any of this works. You'll notice it's, uh, it might be a little confusing, it might be a little bit tough to understand first go around, but it's pretty short, it's pretty quick and easy to do. All right, in the next video, we'll start to look at how we respond to changes in these dropdowns uh, and then how we create a new database record.